So what I'm going to do today is just give you an overview. I'm going to talk about the importance of crash data, uh, an insight into the federal highway safety programs. Jonathan mentioned um, the tribal transportation safety program. I'm going to explain a little bit about where we are with that and, and what we know uh, today. And just briefly touch on uh, tracks because you're going to hear other presenters that will actually talk about tracks and we'll talk about it in more detail than what I'm uh, familiar with. And for those of you that are not familiar, TRACS is, it stands for Traffic and Terminal Software. Next slide. So the FHWA um, safety mission is to reduce highway fatalities by making our roads safer through the use of a data-driven, systematic approach and addressing all four E's of safety. And by that, we mean engineering, education, enforcement, and emergency response. We are not going to be able to save, solve our highway safety uh, issues with just infrastructure, just engineering. FHWA, NHTSA, our other safety partners, we're very much supportive of a 4E approach, and that's inclusive of all four of those E's. Um, and traffic data is very important in this. Um, it, it's also used, uh, Gary mentioned safety planning, and, and that's really what it's going about, is the data helps us determine and know what the issues actually are, or what's happening out there on our roadway. Uh, it helps us identify locations, it helps us identify what would be the appropriate countermeasures. We might go out and look at a site and think we know how to solve it, but the data actually gives us a better insight as to what's happening uh, on the roadway. It helps us make an informed decision. Um, our resources are very, very tight, whether you're talking about staffing or funding. And by having uh, crash data, it helps the decision makers make an informed decision and really make the best decision for the limited uh, resources. Now, we know that traffic crashes are a problem for our, uh, Indian lands. And there was a strategic high, or tribal strategic highway safety plan prepared a couple years ago. And in that, it identified 80% of Indian reservation fatalities occurred within the boundaries of five states. It's amazing, 80% within the boundaries of five states. Arizona is one of those states. Um, Arizona, Montana, South Dakota, New Mexico, and Idaho. So the Navajo Nation is in two of those states where a very high percent of our crashes are happening on Indian land. Um, and while these statistics are alarming, um, anecdotal information indicates that we're underrepresenting our crashes on uh, Indian reservations. Our tribal data is not, um, it, it, it's, we've heard mentioned, it's in boxes. Um, it, it may not be uh, reported as accurately and timely as needed so that we actually can make those informed decisions. Um, I was in a meeting, I guess it was a week and a half ago, with the, the Navajo Nation, and they were sharing with us that the Indian Health Services, uh, their data shows that for Navajo Nation, 85% of your fatalities are related to traffic crashes. Uh, again, an alarming statistic, but supportive of why we're here or to, to talk about what we need to do um, to work together to help improve our highway safety. Next slide. So I've, I've touched on some of these. The need for crash data. It allows for data-driven uh, data decision making. And again, with limited resources, that is what um, the Congress is asking the federal agencies to do. Uh, we're putting in more accountability, uh, going to the use of performance measures to help us really show what we're able to accomplish with the funding that's being provided uh, to the states, to the tribal governments, through the federal agencies. Um, again, uh, analysis has shown that the uh, traffic crash reporting on Indian country is underrepresented, that we may have more crashes out there than we're aware of. Um, while you know, it may make our data look good if we're making improvements, not knowing really what's happening out there on the roadway is not allowing us to really do the best job we can in helping to improve our highway safety. So 
the key to uh, effective data-driven decision-making is the collection of timely and accurate data. Um, it's then used in the analysis so that we have processes that we can actually use this data to determine what our issues are, and in distribution, any decisions for funding. So it helps us prioritize our allocation of resources, identify our safety problems and locations. We're looking at identifying trends. If there's trends that we're actually seeing out there on the roadway, we might be able to implement more of a strategic and a systematic approach, and not just spot locations. But to be able to identify that, to know what our problem is, we need the um, traffic data. And then uh, lastly, it helps in the justification for safety funds. You're going to hear more about that. But again, others are going to be deciding which projects to fund and having that data to support your request um, will, will help any requests that are made, whether it's to the uh, FHWA or if it's to the state DOT. Next. I just wanted to give one example of crash data needs for road safety assessments. Uh, road safety assessments is a tool that's used to help us uh, in identifying um, our issues and appropriate countermeasures. And this is a tool that the Navajo Nation has used over the last few years, and quite extensively compared to uh, many other tribes. But we need the crash data detailing the location, the type, and even the severity of the crash. And we're looking at the crashes that have happened over the last three years. Could go to five if the data's uh, available. Uh, it helps us identify trouble spots, and again, trends or patterns. Um, on several of the road safety audits that have been done, um, if the, when the state DOT is contacted for crash data, they will provide what they have available in their system. And I believe it's been found when we're actually out doing the road safety audit, that that data is different uh, in that it might not be as complete as what the, the tribal police department has available. What we want to work towards is having sharing of data so that both entities or all entities uh, working to solve the problem have the same picture, can, can see what is going on. Um, the, the state DOT, when they're looking to uh, allocate their highway safety improvement program funding, which is a program I'm going to talk about, they look at their data. And if, if the data they have available, when I say their data, they're the collector in, in the state boundaries for uh, local, tribal, and, and state highway data uh, on the crashes. They look at that and they help try to identify where our problems are. And if they don't have the data, then it cannot be used in that analysis. So I mentioned the Federal Way Highway Safety Improvement Program. Um, this is part of the Federal Way Highway Program. And it's the federal aid side. It is the program that my office uh, oversees and provides technical assistance to. It is a state administered federally assisted program, very similar to when Jonathan mentioned the tribal transportation program, which is a federally funded program for tribes. Um, the HSIP program uh, is administered by the state DOT but there are other recipients that are eligible for the funding, but they have to go through and request it through the state DOT. The Federal Highway Administration does not select projects. That is the um, DOT's responsibility. And you'll hear them um, on that side of the program, you'll hear them refer to as subrecipients, because that's what it is. It's a recipient that is going through the primary grant recipient, and that's what the state DOT is for the Federal Highway Program. They are the primary grant recipient just like a tribe would be the primary grant recipient for the tribal transportation program. So the HSIP emphasizes a data-driven strategic approach to improving highway safety that, again, focuses on results. Yes. So the purpose of the safety improvement program to achieve a significant reduction in fatalities and serious injuries through the implementation of infrastructure-related highway safety improvements. Now, we, we say infrastructure uh, here. That MAP 21, you've heard mention MAP 21, the recently, um, the recent, the, the latest 
reauthorization that was approved in July. It actually has expanded and is allowing us to use HSIP for non-infrastructure um, related projects. So that's a, a new uh, addition to um, this program. But again, we're aiming at reducing fatalities and serious injuries. As a nation, we're at an all-time um, low of our highway fatalities. Now, in Arizona, over the last two years, um, let me back up. In Arizona, around 2005, did we peak at five or seven? 2007, we might have peaked. We were, um, we had experienced over 1,300 fatalities on our roadways in Arizona. Now, that's all public roadways. Um, we were able to, through concerted efforts and, and four E's, not not just enforcement, not just engineering, but working together across the state, we were able to see a reduction. And by 2010, we had reduced that to 752 fatalities, I believe it was. Now, I want to mention any fatality is one too many. I'm up here talking and talking about data, but, but please recognize each one of these pieces of data, each one of these statistics is, is a loved one, is a family. And that's what we want to do. We want to strive to allow everyone to get home safely and do what we can to help them with um, those travels. But we were able to, to get a reduction. Uh, over the last two years, our trend is going in the wrong direction. So again, we need to work together and make a concerted effort to identify um, what, uh, what we need to do to help improve our highway safety in Arizona. So, Data-driven, you're going to keep hearing us say that, data-driven. As um, the state prepares their funding and, and programming for safety projects, they will be looking at data. If a request comes in from a sub-recipient, they'll be looking for, well, how does this fit into your priorities? What, what is the data that shows you this is your, your problem? And, and that pertains to the tribe also. They could um, request funding through this program. Next slide. An element of the HSIP is a strategic highway safety plan. The strategic highway safety plans are data driven. It's a statewide plan that was required um, starting with uh, Safety Lou, which was passed in 2005. And it provides a framework for reducing highway fatalities and serious injuries within that state. Uh, it's developed through a collaborative process with safety stakeholders. It's to look at all four E's and integrates engineering, education, enforcement, and emergency services, considers the safety of all public roads, and it guides the investment decisions that the state DOTs and others may make. Next slide. So Arizona developed their strategic highway safety plan. Um, between 2000, it was primarily in 2006 and 2007 after safety was passed. path. And it was adopted in, in 2007. That is the current strategic highway safety plan. And it was based on the available data at that time. Um, they are getting ready to update that strategic highway safety plan. And having accurate and available tribal safety data will allow the plan to be more appropriate for really addressing our, our needs. And I encourage you to be involved in, in that process. You know, uh, through Don and Misty and, and Kelly in my office and, and others as we go through that update. You know, be involved. Um, I'll just touch on the Arizona Strategic Highway Safety. We have several emphasis areas. Uh, one is restrained usage, usage seatbelts. Much easier way to say it. Uh, young drivers. Uh, speeding, impaired driving, roadway and roadside. We have a large number of runoff the road uh, crashes. And then data improvement. So again, the use of uh, tracks was something that the uh, Arizona uh, Coalition uh, did. They, they identified that we needed to improve our data collection and our data information. And through an effort with the Traffic Records Coordinating Committee, you, you'll hear more about this from others, but they looked at different programs and they identified tracks as the one that was appropriate for Arizona. But it was an effort done under the Strategic Highway Safety Plan and that uh, emphasis area of um, data improvement. Thanks. I 
know this is a rather dry topic, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> hopefully I'm keeping you guys uh, engaged. Um, it, you know, ask me questions as we go along if you want. Uh, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, so I'm, I'm trying not to talk too fast. Um, but I also know it can be a little bit dry, so uh, it, it is very, uh, very important information. So the Federal Way HSIP program is outlined in 23 CFR 924.5, um, paragraph B. We always have to figure out references of where we're coming from. Um, but to ensure that the HSIP is carried out in an organized, systematic man manner so that we can ensure that we're getting the best benefits for our limited resources. Um, a formalized HSIP process has been developed by the Federal Highway Administration, and it um, consists of three major components, planning, <coughs> implementation, and evaluation. And that's what I wanted to uh, touch on next, next slide. Now this slide's a little bit busy, I understand that. <laughs> But, but I wanted to put it up here to show you uh, the steps on the uh, project planning process. And as you can see, on the project identification, data collection, and having that data so it can be analyzed, it is it's critical and is an important piece in this uh, project planning process. So a few of the important HSIP requirements, it's based on the strategic highway safety emphasis areas and strategies, and, and you saw the ones that we have in Arizona. You know, they're very, very typical. Um, the roadway, uh, roadside is a, a broad one that captures our infrastructure. Uh, we also have some intersection um, emphasis areas within that category. Uh, focused on reducing fatalities and serious crashes. Again, we want our traveling public to make it home safely. To carry out through the STIP process, and the STIP process is the State Transportation Improvement Program process. That's part of our planning process that identifies um, funding for projects. And so for a uh, tribal nation to uh, request or utilize HSIP funding, they would need to make a request and work through the Arizona DOT and the planning organizations in your area. So for Arizona, that would be NACOG, and, and Don and Misty if you, uh, are, are great contacts for that. If you're not involved in the NACOG process, again, I encourage you to do so for the side of accessing the federal dollars that come into the state DOT because the tribal governments are eligible uh, subrecipients of that funding and it can be used to supplement your transportation, your tribal transportation program. Uh, it identifies an, uh, or it addresses an identified highway safety concern, again, uh, identified through a data-driven process. Yes. I, I wanted to touch a little bit on the, oh, yes, John. I a question on, the, on getting on the, uh, getting funded for the, for the, um, uh, state for the safety program. Mm -hmm. So the tribe, uh, does the tribe submit an application or does the tribe submit a, a safety priority listing and goes through a NACOP process? From there it gets submitted to Federal Highway, right? Actually, I'm going to let uh, Kelly, my, my safety engineer, uh, address that a little bit more. The, the ADOT is the one that is determining uh, the priorities for the HSIP, but they also look for the planning organizations to, to give them input. Okay. So you do need to work through them. We just determine eligibility. We don't get to actually decide which projects that we funded. Uh, we, we don't get to look at a list of 20 and say, these are the top 15 we think we should fund. Um, that is a, a decision made by the state DOT. Thank you, Carly. Yes, that's mostly um, a great description of the process, but um, once you have your transportation projects identified and planned out, you can do that for three or four or five years here. You would work with NACOM um, for the Arizona Department of Transportation HSIP program. And um, there's a couple different routes that they can work with you on funding. There's a set-aside for a regionally-based um, agency that the tribe can um, also um, plan for their projects with other counties and cities. 
And there's also a statewide um, set aside through the HIV program that you can work with, um, NACOG and then through ADOC. So both of those project groups will go through NACOG and then ADOC, and they will help plan and um, identify funding and which um, fiscal year um, for those projects. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Is there, um, is there criteria how, how these projects um, uh, will be selected? Yes. Always probably data driven? Yes, definitely data driven. Um, the focus should be on projects that reduce fatalities and serious injury crashes, so that's where the need for data comes in. Um, you can also predict um, based on safety trends. If you don't have crash data using anecdotal data and predicting which type of safety improvements you identify might reduce future uh, fatalities and serious injury crashes. So um, those are two different ways. And our, our data is another great um, process for identifying safety projects. I know the Nautilus of the has utilized that very beneficial program and has already identified some safety projects and some federal data. That's a great thing to do. Thank you. Do you want to mention the resource to the HSIP thing? Yes, that's great. Thank you, Professor. There's also, um, for the state of Arizona, an HSIP um, manual that we're actually in the process of updating with the NOT. And um, there's some other um, HSIP resources at the FHWA level also. If you're interested in that, you can go on the FHWA website and I can give you more information about that also. But it identifies the process, um, projects, proven countermeasures that help um, directly address um, safety improvements that we know are going to make a difference. For example, uh, lighting shoulders and normal strips. And it also identifies the planning process. And is there like a um, time frame for calls for applications or project submissions? For the regionally based set aside, there is a time frame. I think for the state set aside, you can uh, <coughs> work with ADOT all year long on a given site. Is it, are all state owned roads eligible or just some state roads? <laughs> Um, Ron's question were, are all state, did you say state-owned roads? State-owned roads. State-owned yeah. roads eligible, or are other roads eligible? Yeah, yeah, what's the eligibility, kind of general categories? A good question, because when you hear us talk about the Federal Highway Program, there are certain classification of roads that are eligible. Uh, the clarification for the Highway Safety Improvement Program is that it's all public roads. So as long as a road is open to the public, um, the owner can apply for HSIP funding. So for um, our safety programs, it's all public roads. We have other funding programs called the Service Transportation Program, the National Highway uh, Performance Program. Those all have different uh, eligibilities and are based on functional classification. For the HSIP, it's all public so it's not just the federal federal aid classified roads? No, it's all public roads. So a tribal route would be, a, a tribal owned road would be eligible. Again, data driven, you, you have to show that there is a safety problem, but all public owned roads are eligible. Don, you have a question? Well, I didn't have a question, I just had a comment or a suggestion with regards to working with NACOG and the regional planning aspect of it. Maybe what your first step should be would be to contact NACOG, uh, the NACOG regional, uh, NACOG regional office of Flagstaff, and get a hold of uh, Jason Kelly. My understanding is he's the, the new contact there, since Chris, Chris Fetzer is now the director for NACOG. <clears throat> get a hold of him and uh, maybe talk over your interest in participating in that program and where you're at as far as identifying your projects. And then possibly get on the uh, Technical Transportation Subcommittee to present uh, whatever project you want to pursue and try to start you know, working to obtain that support uh, from that group as well. So that's kind of what I would suggest as far as, as, far as uh, uh, initiating that process at the, at the regional planning level. Thank you, John. And I know I have one more question before I get to some of the other questions. Um, Chris I do want to mention what I'm presenting and what Kelly talked about is the Arizona process. 
You also have the same program as administered uh, by the New Mexico uh, DOT, and they work with the New Mexico Division. Our programs are flexible enough to allow states to set up the processes that work that meet our criteria. So um, I do not have that contact uh, with me right now, but we can provide that to Jonathan or whoever the, the key person would be to, to learn more about the HSIP uh, program in, in New Mexico and, and even Utah. How competitive is it to, to get funding to HSIP? Because um, if it's data driven, we're kind of a, like an RSA that we did this past summer. We found out that a lot of the crash data we had were, there was a big difference in what we had here on the nation and what the state had for the same route. And I'm afraid that our, our data is as good as some of the you know, people down south may do. I can address the latter part of it. Do you want to address the, uh, the competitiveness of it? Is it very competitive though? <clears throat> That's a great question. And you've definitely identified the need why we would like to um, share data and the purpose of this meeting. So, but to address the competitiveness of the program, um, they do look at the, um, what's called the benefit cost ratio, that's one tool for evaluating projects. But I think also um, there's enough agencies out there that are working with NACOG to develop the planning process that they plan projects out depending on which year and which funding is available. Um, in addition, there's statewide funding that if the um, regional process is, um, I don't know if full is the right word, but um, planned out so many years, that's an alternative that you can go through directly to ADOT to um, look at additional funding sources through the HSIP program with state So. Although it might be um, competitive, definitely get on that. Um, as Don mentioned, the tribal, uh, the technical safety committee through NACOG, and you can start working with the agencies through that. And um, if you need any additional assistance after, we can help put you in the, uh, in the right context. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. And, and Martha, I'd also offer that there is an understanding that different agencies are at different levels of um, uh, experience and accuracy with their traffic data. In the past, we have uh, worked on anecdotal data or even uh, newspaper articles, but, but something that is gathered to show that there is uh, a, a problem. Uh, so as you're building that capacity, I wouldn't have that as a reason not to start those discussions. We're really here today to talk about where can we go in the, in the future and, and utilizing a um, software system that allows you to have the traffic effectively and, and, and in real time will assist Navajo VOT. We see will be a benefit for Navajo uh, Nation, but I wouldn't let that be a reason not to start having those discussions because there is an understanding of that level of, of, of available uh, data. Uh, the RSAs that have been done, the reports that come out of that can be used to support a request for uh, funding application. Because I believe during that process you went in and possibly uncovered data that was not available in the, in the state system. Does that help? Yes. Okay. Uh, I saw a few other hands. Yes. Um, I represent the New Mexico Department of Transportation. And we have the same available resources available to you for the roads that are um, in New Mexico. We have, I can um, link you with the contacts. We're very willing um, to work with you and participate in any committees. We do have funding. And uh, Rodolfo, um, I forgot his last name, Monke. Um, Rodolfo Monke with FHWA in New Mexico is also a contact that would be very willing and interested in helping us. We also work with uh, NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, 
and uh, the BIA office out in Albuquerque, and there's a lot of resources in front of me. And um, as you had mentioned earlier, Carla, um, the new map 21 appropriation is very data driven, and that's what you're going to see um, required <coughs> as we proceed for future funding. So it's all going to be uh, data based. Thank you. I remember that we had some New Mexico DOT representatives here. And uh, it, it's my nature to talk about airlines. <coughs> that's the program I administer. But you know, we do have those contacts, and we can make sure that you have the information that you need uh, going forward. Um, and the, I'll go back to the presentation that uh, Mr. Burbank and Mr. Sneed and I saw uh, in Minnesota. This is what the um, a little. I'm sorry, I have a very tough time with um, different names. Um, as a child, I learned to talk when I lived in West Virginia. I had no teeth. Um, I, seriously, I had an accident where my front teeth were cut out, so until they grew in, I, I learned to talk in West Virginia with a Hawili accent, no teeth. Moved to Pennsylvania when I was about five or six. My teeth came in, and no one could understand me. So I went to seven years of speech, and, and I still have difficulty with certain um, combinations of consonants. So, uh, the, the tribe that we heard from in South Dakota, uh, they were sharing that after utilizing uh, the track software and agreeing to share their data with the South Dakota DOT, one of the, the results was they were able to get HSIP funding. So they saw the benefit and we saw it. I think fairly quickly after starting to uh, share the data. Any other questions on that side? Because I'm going to move on to now more of the tribal safety management system. Again, that's the what we were talking about was the Federal program, and that's the program that's administered by state DOTs, federally assisted but administered by state DOTs. Okay. I'm going to move on then to tribal safety management system. Um, um, there it has been a strategic plan developed, uh, a highway safety strategic plan for Indian lands that was developed um, several years ago, and it has an emphasis areas. And it was developed based on, again, the data that we had available to us uh, at that time. Um, the tribal safety management system uh, efforts are led by uh, a steering committee. You've heard us mention the steering committee. I'm on the steering committee. Um, I was uh, a new member appointed after I became the division administrator in Arizona. Uh, Richard Skaggs has served on um, the steering committee from Indian Health Services and actually has also helped us acquire uh, some additional representation from Indian Health Services. Uh, we've expanded out and we now also have representation from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. Ron Hall has been uh, a member on the uh, steering committee, and we also have, um, let me make sure I get the name, um, we have a, a gentleman that is from the Navajo Police that uh, joined the steering committee last year. Um, Mr. Leonard Redhorse II is also on that steering committee. Uh, the steering committee is made up of uh, different federal agencies, Federal Highway Administration, BIA, uh, NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and from BIA we have uh, DOT representation, and we also have um, their uh, highway safety program uh, representation. And then there's tribal representatives. We have um, five different uh, tribal planning uh, representatives, and then there's also uh, TTAP that serves on that steering committee. Um, and what the steering committee has done, again, put together the strategic plan. Um, they put together an implementation plan. The implementation plan outlines the strategies that we're going to use uh, to help further and improve highway safety on Indian country. Really, the implementation plan for um, the strategic efforts. Um, the strategic plan led by eight emphasis areas for Indian lands, and it was based on the available data that we had at that time. And from the information I could find, the data we were looking at was around 2002 and 2003 and, and previous data. 
the strategic plan was actually developed in the 2004-2005 time frame. Uh, next slide. So, what are the strategic uh, plan emphasis areas? Number one, decision-making process. Two, data collection. Again, we see that data collection and the importance of having uh, data. Runoff the road crashes, occupant protection and child restraint, alcohol and drug impaired driving, other driver behavior and awareness, drivers under 35. In, in many areas, they refer, they're sometimes called to uh, as younger drivers, but the younger drivers are more your teen drivers and those going up to 24. In Indian country, they actually identify that it was drivers under the age of 35. And then also um, pedestrian uh, safety. Now, the background on um, these emphasis areas. Uh, so what we found, um, and the analysis showed, was that it was uh, strongly suggesting that we were underrepresenting the crashes in Indian country. And, and so without having that accurate data, um, we don't really, you know, does this present a, a true picture or not? Um, right, at this point in time, we don't know. It, it presents the picture and the emphasis areas based on the data we needed. As we move forward, that's why data collection is there as an emphasis area. We recognize that we need to improve um, the data collection in Indian country. The next slide, please. Okay, well, what I have here, I'm providing you the link um, for the Tribal Safety Implementation Plan. This would be an excellent resource for the Navajo um, DOT. It um, is used to ask, uh, assess and promote the strategies across the nation. It will outline what activities we might have funding for. Uh, for example, there's a component on education. There's a component on conferences. The Tribal Safety Transportation Summit was a summit that was uh, held in support of the implementation plan. So there's various strategies in there, uh, strategies associated with tribes building their own capacity and learning um, how to do safety planning and developing um, pilots for developing safety plans. So it's, it's an excellent resource. A lot of the funding, um, the federal highway uh, funding is administered by our federal lands program and that's where Mr. Craig Ginsburg comes in. But there's also opportunities for BIA funding, uh, NHTSA funding, you'll hear a program called 402. Um, this is outlined in the implementation plan. Um, and, and on this, I'm actually, this is from the implementation plan, so I, uh, bear with me, I'm gonna read it, just so that you get a better understanding of what the purpose of the implementation plan. Um, the implementation plan is used to assess and promote strategies that tribes can tailor to develop in-house self-sustaining expertise to improve safety on tribal land. Because tribal transportation programs and tribally run highway safety programs are still in their beginning stages, and we recognize that, um, this implementation plan is intended to aid tribal governments in collaborating with federal agencies and state DOTs pursue training to increase the capacity and expertise of tribal governments in the roadway safety arena, and stimulate tribal innovation through peer-to-peer -peer best practice exchanges to save lives in Indian country. Again, that's in, the, that's in the premise of the implementation plan, and it was developed to help support um, tribes and as a way to help us improve highway safety in Indian country. Um, Safety solutions occur at the local level, and tribes will need to make critical decisions on how to prioritize, staff, fund, and sustain their highway safety projects. That's all what you're going to be going through as you develop your highway safety plan. And, and what is the right approach for the Navajo Nation in developing um, this plan? So the um, activities outlined in the implementation plan help support that and help um, really build that capacity within the tribal nations. But we're not able to do that if, if our tribes aren't familiar with the implementation plan or the efforts that are underway. There have been um, calls for pilot projects that have gone out, but, but sometimes are they heard? You know, are we reaching the right audiences? So that was one reason why I wanted to take this time here today to really let you know about this implementation. 
implementation plan and share uh, this resource. Um, and in the plan, it talks about data collection. And it outlines that um, you know, information about motor vehicle crashes that occur on Indian country roadways is vital to identifying and remedy the safety problems in tribal communities. You're going to hear that from me over and over. Uh, data driven. It really is very important in safety planning. Next slide. So the SMS implementation plan is a guide for tribal safety. It uh, looks at the past and, and the present and what do we need to do going forward. Um, there are some safety set-asides uh, in the previous implementation plan as we update that after Map 21. Some of that may be changing. But again, it's an excellent resource uh, for the Navajo Nation. Uh, and um, the, the funding that you get if you apply for funding from the state DOT, it can be used to um, be combined with tribal safety uh, planning. Under Map 21, the Tribal Transportation Program funding can be used as a match for uh, the state administered, or the funds through the state administered program. And this is the same link, just provided it to you on two different slides. I have a question. Yes. On Map 21, eligible <coughs> activities, tribal safety plan, enforcement, EMS education program, and improvements. Why not infrastructure, software, hardware? Because bottom line is all of this data, and we're talking about data sharing information, comes from police agencies that are responding to accident, accidents that on, occur on roads within our jurisdiction. So there's, I don't see anything that's eligible for police departments to say how this can be captured and or infrastructure, hardware, software, is that eligible? It, I, I'm going to say yes, it's not on this slide, but I do touch on that. Uh, when we, I've got a slide on federal assistance and some of that money, uh, our Federal Lands Highway Program does have uh, available Again, it's becoming less and less uh, uh, available as others are using it, and that's what we wanted to, to share with you here. But in, um, we have provided funding for enforcement to purchase um, tough book computers or uh, the, the hardware that is needed to help support this data collection, and that assistance is available. I don't know the dollar amount for that, and that's where Craig, uh, Mr. Um, Ginsledger comes into effect or into play. And he's moved ahead uh, on my presentation, so I'll be getting there, but, it, but infrastructure is also uh, eligible. And with MAP 21, we're in the, uh, what I call the formation stages. We, we're learning everything we can about that. But if there's something that hasn't been covered and you think it should, we ask the question. It may be that it was just a, a, something that they didn't put in the slide. But I know that they're working on that tribal safety uh, transportation program as we speak. And there have been other, in the past, um, supporting enforcement has been uh, eligible for federal funding. Was there another? Well, the Indian Highway Safety Program uh, out of NHTSA. So this is our the NHTSA, the 42. The 42. There's an office in Albuquerque, the Indian Highway Safety Program. and. Most of their money, their funding goes to support the law enforcement data side of things. So that's really been kind of the strongest funding source for, for this activity. Thank you. And they, they are a member on the uh, steering committee. And I guess I would say there are a lot of different opportunities for uh, funding. And as you go through this, the key is talking and working with those that, that might be able to point you in that right direction. And I think Mr. Hall is, uh, is, a, is a, a very good example of that through his work with TTAP and knowledge of the Safety Management Steering Committee, the work that we've done with Indian Health Services, uh, with NHTSA and with BIA can help you point to the different areas where you can receive funding. Carla, do you also have wedding? Does that answer your question? Or do you have another one? No, I'm, I'm aware of all of that. It's just that um, it's 
not very pronounced when all of these activities are being addressed. But it seems to be on the lower end. And it's not, it should be on the priority end. It should be the back. It should be the, because that's where the data is captured. So I believe it should be the, the, the opposite end. Anyway, but I, I, all of this can be for discussion at the end, and I'm just looking forward to, to the whole process okay. being done. So. Okay. Um, next slide. So I was going to touch on the MAP-21 Tribal Transportation Safety Program. As mentioned, this is an element that came out of MAP-21, which was just passed in uh, July. Next slide. So MAP-21 section uh, 1119 or 1119, however you want to refer to it, uh, it authorizes the establishment of a tribal safety program by setting aside not more than 2% of the funds made available under the tribal transportation program for each fiscal year. This is a program that is administered by our Federal Lands Highway Division. Um, the, the team that administers this is Mr. Bob Sparrow's team out of our Federal Lands Highway Division. And as uh, I've mentioned the name before, Mr. Craig Kinslinger is our Highway Safety Specialist. Uh, since MAP 21, we've been looking at developing implementation uh, guidance. And what we have here is the information that Mr. Kinslinger shared with us. And he also presented at the Tribal Transportation Conference in Phoenix just a, a week and a half ago. Um, but the set-aside comes from the top before the allocation of each uh, tribal region. Um, we're not going to get into the funding formula. <laughs> that, that's for someone else to, to speak on. Um, but it does focus on um, identification and analysis of the highway safety issues and tribal safety um, programs. And um, this was the program that uh, Jonathan had uh, spoken about the tribal transportation program that again is administered from an FHA standpoint from our federal lands office. Next. So eligible activities, as you can see, there's four different components: uh, tribal safety plans, enforcement and EMS, education programs, and engineering improvements. Um, and there's funding goals for each one of these categories. So it may have been that you were just looking at one slide, but uh, based on this information, that is an eligible uh, component. One of the, uh, I, I would offer you my observation with what Congress did in this last reauthorization, is they're recognizing that giving us our funding in com compartments really can restrict what we can do with that funding. And, and MAP 21 did provide many opportunities for us to look at what our needs are and identify the funding and not be not be constrained by the different compartments. Uh, as I mentioned, the HSIP has been opened up so that we can fund non-infrastructure. Where previously all of our funding was infrastructure only and you had to go to NINSA for non-infrastructure. Congress has seen that they'd rather give us the, the flexibility to determine which funding is appropriate to use. And, and I see that in this tribal safety program also, that they uh, outlined a broad base of eligible activities. So next slide. So tribal safety plans. Um, they've got a goal of 40% of the funding um, in year one. And they're going to focus on allowing for all tribes to develop a safety plan to identify and priority needs, or prioritize their needs. Um, they're going to do, like I mentioned, 40% in the first year. It's projected that in future years that amount will be reduced. But because the need to develop highway safety plans is high, they are allocating a higher amount of funding to that. Um, Tribal safety plans will most likely be funded first and ranked higher. As you mentioned, the data collection is an important piece of that. But I think you could put your project in, your application in, to show both components and why you need um, both components. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, on the tribal safety plan, the intent is 
to be able to fund any tribe that currently does not have a tribal safety plan. So uh, again, if, if, if you don't have a plan and you uh, request funding for the development of that plan, uh, their, their goal is to meet that request. So other safety planning activities, data collection, data analysis, and improvement, um, conducting road safety audits. And then they will be ranked based upon, are they included in your existing safety plan, or are they included in what you're developing as your safety plan? Uh, funds will be leveraged with other uh, funds, and it's part of a comprehensive safety approach. So really trying to get you to look at the addressing the highway safety from a uh, compre comprehensive view and not within compartments and not just one, one item at a time, but how does it all fit together? Next slide. So 20% of um, the funding is the goal in year one for enforcement and EMS. Uh, emergency communication equipment is eligible, traffic enforcement activities, coordination with the BIA, uh, HSIP, and I believe they're the ones that administer the uh, the NHTSA for two grant. Is that correct, Ron? Um, and then this is going to be based on ranked based on data, uh, whether it's in your current safety plan, um, leveraging your funds, and comprehensive approach. And you're going to hear a lot of this: of is it in your current safety plan? I believe there's recognition that not all tribes have a, a current safety plan. And your safety plan may be that your number one priority is to develop uh, an effective co uh, data collection system. So there is a way to present this information and still be competitive. I, my advice would be showing really how you're going to approach it and, and how it is a comprehensive uh, approach. Next slide. Education. Um, 10% goal in year one for education. Uh, it can fund public service announcements, safety management, uh, system activities, uh, programs to inform or address driver behavior. And, and we've had some education-based uh, programs in Arizona in the past. I know Esther, you have been uh, key in helping different tribes of, uh, receive federal funding to do campaigns. Um, we have, uh, I apologize, I'm not sure where the NAPCO Nation is. Do you have a primary seatbelt law? I thought you did. Um, I mean, that's one thing I love to go and tell the state DOT and the, and the DPS. I mean, we've got uh, the captain right here. You know, we have several. Uh, Esther is at four or five uh, tribes now that it's five. five. Five tribes within Arizona that have a primary seatbelt law. Our state legislators can't even get it together to realize how important that is. Sorry, Chuck. You're, you're right there with me. Uh, we, we'd love to have it. So, you know, education is another one of those components that's important. And, and you know, the, the nation could uh, use that to help promote the fact and, and make sure that those driving in the nation are aware that you have a primary seatbelt law. Uh, next slide. So engineering improvements. So this was, would be our infrastructure one. So 30% of the goal in uh, year one for roadway improvements. Um, there's an extensive list in the guidance, and all of our MAP 21 guidance has been posted out on FHWA's website. Uh, again, it'll be ranked based on data, and if you don't have, you know, it, you provide what data you can. Uh, I believe what you'll learn, as we've heard before, going out there and trying to find that data, you'll be looking through boxes and so forth. Uh, what we're going to hear more about moving forward is are there approaches to make it uh, a more effective way to uh, collect and share that data. Um, so next, next slide. This is going to be an application-based um, program, and the application is being developed for each project type. And again, our Federal Lands Highway um, Division is the one putting the process together. You can apply for multiple projects. And you can, you know, in your application, show how they tie together, how they support, how they provide a comprehensive approach. Um, the projects will be ranked by BIA, FHWA, and um, and the tribes. It sounds like they're going to be using a, a committee approach to um, rank these projects. Next slide. 
And so the time frames for 2013, since MAP 21 was um, passed and we're in implementation, they are moving forward uh, with the call for projects. So we expect on January 4th there to be a call for projects in the Federal Register and March 1 tries to submit the applications to the Federal Land um, Tribal Transportation uh, Program Safety Fund Coordinator. Um, and, and you can see the rest of it. Uh, there'll be a second call uh, for projects on April 19. Oh. Uh, if, if you've not utilized the, the resources, uh, Ron TTAC can help them with some of this, correct? Yeah. So we have Mr. Hall here who uh, can provide assistance in, in helping you be prepared for when this call comes out. And so to, to touch on the traffic in criminal software, um, this is an application software that combined with laptop computers, one or more PC in a central office, and data communications provides officers with the functionality needed to record and retrieve incident information wherever and uh, whenever an incident occurs. It really does provide uh, real-time uh, access to the data. You're going to hear more from the Highway Patrol on the actual use of it and the hands-on. I'm just giving you more of what, what it is. The software was developed, you'll hear this referred to as a national model for a statewide application. So under the national model, they chose to use uh, the boundary of state uh, for the developing of uh, the model. And it's a statewide application of data collection and management technology to improve highway safety. The national model effort uh, actually was undertaken in the late 1990s. Uh, Next slide. So again, I just want to touch a little bit on TRAX. Uh, TRAX was developed as a national model. Um, a site license is needed. Um, if a state has purchased a state license, again, it was developed as a, a statewide um, model. It does have open uh, source coding, so you can do some of your own um, uh, development. Um, and if a state has purchased a state li site license, others within that state can utilize the software under the state's license, which includes, this does include tribal governments. Now this does not preclude a tribal government from purchasing their own site, site license. What it does is give you the opportunity to use a site license that has already been purchased for purchased by a state DOT or the State Department of uh, Public Safety. So for the Navajo Nation, um, Arizona uses tracks and so does New Mexico. Utah does not, I think, here in yeah. Uh, we found out Utah uh, does not. Uh, and as we mentioned this summer, what we heard from was a, uh, a tribe that had been successful in entering into an agreement and actually sharing their data uh, with the South Dakota, South Dakota Department of Public Safety and the South Dakota DOT, and they found it to be um, beneficial. Uh, purchasing of a new license would be approximately anywhere from 65000 to 45000 so it is a use of very limited resources. And uh, I know in other meetings we've been in with the Navajo Nation, we've talked about how do we combine our resources to, to help with advancement and not duplicate efforts. Uh, but again, there is nothing that precludes a nation from purchasing a license. But what you have in both Arizona and New Mexico are states that have site license and they're willing to allow uh, tribal and other governments to utilize that license. Um, so with the, the national model, we're at 15. This might be up to 16 or 17 states. They're always uh, expanding and we have one um, province. There is a national model uh, support group. Uh, they, they have conferences. Uh, they, they meet. Again, you're going to hear more about this. Um, the tribe would be the owner of the data. That's a question that had been asked. The tribe would be the owner of the data. And what's important as we move forward is, is listening and learning from each other and sharing uh, what, what that might mean. Um, what, 
the DOTs and the uh, DPS and others are interested in is that pertinent data that helps us determine what was, you know, who caused the crash or, or where did it happen? Um, you know, was it dry weather? Was it wet weather? Or was it day or was it night? The, there's, those elements are important when you start looking at what are the appropriate countermeasures. If you have crashes that are all happening at night, you more than likely have a different countermeasure than you would if they were happening during the day. I mean, it may be that you don't have good lighting or you have no lighting in your pavement markings or to the point where you can't see the roadway in front of you. But during the day, you know, you can see that painted line. So the, the data, the pertinent data, is really what we want to get to and what we're uh, requesting to be uh, shared. And I just want to touch on uh, FHWA's role. We're not here to uh, tell you you have to use one software or the other. We're here to encourage you to, to discuss and look at what's the appropriate approach for uh, the nation and to help facilitate the discussion with, your, uh, with the state, with Arizona and New Mexico. Um, so that's what our role is. We do not require the use of, of tracks. Um, we do encourage tribal governments to use the standard form um, that is consistent with uh, and used within their state. Uh, for the nation, you, you encompass or you, you're included in Navajo. Um, the Navajo Nation, you, you're over, I believe it's three states. So that that does give you uh, that does give you a challenge. Okay, next slide. Memorandum of agreements are utilized in the uh, data sharing. Um, they can be between the state uh, DOTs or whoever the license holder is uh, with uh, the tribes and or federal lands. Uh, FHWA Federal Lands Highway Division. The Highway Division has been a signature on some of the MOAs, not all of them. It's not required. Again, it's in discussion of what's appropriate now and what, what is needed uh, for the Navajo Nation. It identifies what's the responsibilities of the agencies. What, what are you going to utilize? What assistance is needed? Uh, how you might go about uh, training? What equipment? Um, is going to be provided or acquired. Uh, it, as I mentioned, it addresses who will provide what services, including the training, the software, equipment, the IT support, and really anything else that, as you uh, develop the agreement, you feel is needed in that. And I believe in your packet, there's a copy of, uh, is there a copy of your tracks agreement? I believe I saw that uh, in the packet, so it's really wonderful. Uh, others will be talking more detail about tracks. Next slide. So FHWA's assistance, what can we do um, to help with this? Well, we can help facilitate those discussions, help you get matched up to um, others that have experienced this, uh, what funding might be available, how we can assist. Uh, Craig Genslinger, I've mentioned his name several times, he's on tap to uh, help us with what is needed after this discussion and then moving forward when we identify, you know, is there equipment needs? You know, he'll see what funding he has and help us assist or help assist us uh, where possible. We have in, uh, in other situations actually funded the computer uh, tough books uh, for the enforcement. There have been other uh, arrangements where the police department actually had that funding themselves and didn't need it from uh, FHWA or from uh, NHTSA. So there are other funding sources other than just FHWA. Yes. And this slide is just providing you our contacts from the Arizona Division. We can update you and get you our contacts from the uh, New Mexico Division. Uh, the key one here is uh, Craig uh, 